All right, I was just going to um, just double check the voltages again, and um, I thought, well, this is what it looks like when the RAM is completely disconnected, um, when there is definitely no RAM. That's what we get. And interestingly, we still get on here, let me get that away. We still basically get the same, you know, we always get this five or this S. So pressing keys. So I thought that was interesting. So we, we still get that all the time. You anyway, know, I'm just gonna check the, check the voltages, but um, you know, coming back to, you know, it did work. It did work for about a minute. Then the, the riffer cap went in that, but that, you know, that's, that's just a filter that, you know, it was still outputting correct voltages. So all I can think of, um, and then after that, yeah, it wouldn't boot. And that's because the, um, these two capacitors here were bubbling away. So that basically, you know, we didn't get out of reset, but it did work. So I don't know if some of these, so here we are, this is the power section. I'm not sure exactly, you know, we've got the keyboard slash VFD interface here, and we've got the tape and serial ports. Um, we've got the coprocessor here for this, and we've got those bits there. So I don't know if there's still some damage made. Maybe I need to pull all the electrolytics out again and look for, look for more damage. Um, as I say, it did work. It was working. So, you know, unless there was some over voltage and it's fried a chip, but um, if the voltages are correct, which I'm going to go off here, the, th the thing is here, you know, they're the regulated voltages, and I was basically seeing the voltages as, as they came out of the power supply. Hmm. Anyway, I'm going to check them now. Okay, so let us check. Okay, we're on auto. Now, apparently, if we go, where is, where's a good negative? So let's go on there. So this should be minus 5 volts. Okay, minus 5.3. Okay, yep, minus 5 volts. That's close enough um, this should be 5 volts but it's a bit dirty okay that's 5 volts I wasn't getting that before interesting and then this should be 12 volts okay well I don't have any RAM <laughs> connected so I guess that's okay. All right, so minus five, plus five, and somewhere around 12. Yeah, it's a bit, uh, a bit corroded. All right, close enough. I think, I think. Okay, by the way, be very careful of these transistors. They get very hot. They are normally attached to the metal on the case and um, I accidentally touched them when I picked it up. Very, very hot, very, very hot. Okay, just looking at the uh, schematic, um, we've got the, We've got all the signals labeled 4.3 or 4.3, 4.9, 2.10. So I assume that relates to 1, 2, 3, 4, and there's 10 pins on each one. So I should be able to. So this is the uh, D0 to D7. So they're mostly on. Oh, they jump all over the place. 4 and 2 and 1. Four and two and one. So data's split across these three and addressing 
is mainly on, or so, is on three and three and one. Um, and that's the, um, that's the, you know, the DRAM refresh stuff, which we don't need to worry about. But it's mainly, oh yeah, CAS, which is what we were going to use for the output enable. And then RAS 16 and RAS 32 for the two banks. Uh, bup, bup, bup. That? Oh, just the wind. <laughs> um, yeah, what's this one here? Not sure what that one there is. Okay, read. Okay, oh, okay, maybe that's. Let's read and there's right enable. Oh, I'll have to have a look at how these DRAMs work. So, that's the start. All right, that's what I've been thinking about it. Thinking, thinking, thinking. Um, bit of a beginner's misassumption. So, this is the memory board or the store board. Um, RAM, RAM, 16K, 16K. So all of this logic, oh, that's just a refresh logic. It actually generates the, the CAS and the RAS uh, signals for selecting the uh, the row and the columns, um, as well as the refresh. So, um, which I guess is, you know, this, this bit of logic down here. So, uh, a few options. Um, do I try and simplify this logic here just to pull out the RAS and the CAS, which then I, you know, which I'm just then going to stick into um, something else? Um, or do I reuse this board and remove all of this and then somehow put on the 32K SRAM and a bit of extra logic so I can re reuse this? Or do I use the expansion connector? So I've been fiddling around the expansion connector. Um, and basically, like most computers, it has all of the Z80s, all of the CPUs signals on it. So we've got all the address lines, we've got all the data lines, we've got um, uh, various other things, external external RAM 1, 2, 0, 1 and 2. So I'm thinking I might just stick something out onto from here just to test it basically. Um, so yeah, so when I was looking at the, the Z80 design of course, you know, we've just got, you know, um, RAS and CAS popping out of the ULA. Um, not, not exactly a uh, one for one comparison, but this is a Z. Well, this is a Timex. This is a Timex or Sinclair. Oh no, I think this is a. I think this is a ZX81. Um, you know, basically we've got the Z80, we've got the ROM, we've got the RAM, and then we've got the ULA, which does everything else. So the ULA, which basically <laughs> does all of this stuff. So yeah, you can't really compare the spectrum. Um, yeah, so that's that's what I'm going to try next is basically just having a small board, 32k SRAM on it, and um, basically see if I can get it working. Okay, started. Uh, 2x25, 50 pin header, plus the socket for the memory. So trying to f understand how to do all this. So pretty much it looks like so this is the 62256 32K SRAM. So pretty standard. We've got data in out. We've got address lines, five volts, ground, um, write enable, output enable, chip select. So for these three, Basically, I think tie them straight to the Z80. So we've got uh, read, so I'll tie that to output enable, write, tie that to write enable, and the memory request goes to the chip select. But thinking about because we've got ROM as well, so 
basically the ROM, uh, the ROM, A, B, C, D, E, F. So I think, so Z80 starts at address zero. So somehow it starts at zero, but then it relocates to A000. So I think, I can't remember if this is the OS or input output, this is basic, and then this is some graphics and math routines or something, anyway. So this ROM um, is at A000, this one starts at C000, and this one starts at E000, up to FFFF, you know, 64K. So these three basically take the upper 32K. Um, so when we look at the addresses, pretty much A0 has got A13, A15 high, C00 has got A14, A15 high, and E00 has got A13, 14, and 15 high. So what we've got in common is basically A15, that high byte or high bit. So I'm thinking basically that if A15 is high, then we're accessing the ROM. Otherwise, we're accessing the RAM because the RAM, I assume, takes the bottom 32K, 0 to 7 FFF which always has bit 15, zero. So instead of just tying memory request from the Z80 to chip select, probably what we want to do is if we've got memory request, which is active low, and we've got A15. So let's do 0001101. Um, so if memory request is low, yes, and A15, then that means we want to access the RAM, isn't it? Um, memory request low, so we want that to be zero because it's active low. Okay, if memory request is low, but A15 is high, that means we're accessing the ROM. So that, that's a ROM access. That's a ROM ex uh, RAM access. Uh, memory request is high, then we're not accessing. Um, so we want that to be one. And if it's high, well, again, one. So basically, this is uh, an OR. So I guess what I should add to my little board is... Um, so we've got um, memory request from the Z80 and A15. So these are both on the expansion bus. And then this is basically chip select. So I just need an OR gate. And I have done some research. I think it's, uh, yeah, there we go. I've done some research earlier. 74 LS32, which I've got some of. So I'm going to add one of those. And then um, basically, probably on the, on the bottom, just do all the wires, all the address lines on both bottom and top. Address lines, data lines, and then those three control signals. That's the idea. So I'll put that together. Well, this is the progress so far. Um, wired up the ground and five volts. And I've got a decoupling capacitor on there already. Um, I've also added a reset <laughs> button, so I thought maybe I'll give that a try first. So just to make sure I'm I'm getting the right um, right pinouts, so that kind of goes on like that. So that's reset there. So I thought, okay, I will give that a go. So I don't have to put anything in. I can just oh, I've got to find if I've got a if I've got. Oh, I might have to make one up. Anyway, um, or alternatively, I can just use some jumper wire. I might do that. I'll just use some jumper wire and see if I can reset. Alrighty. It's up and running. Usual garbage. Um, let's see. Reset. Yay. So... Wow, hey, I've, I've invented a reset switch for the Grundy. All right, so, so far so good. Let's see if I can get this memory working then.
it ain't going to be neat or beautiful, but um, yeah, so address lines, data lines. So I'm just, I think I'm just going to go along the row as they appear. A14, D5, D4, D6, A11. So I'm just going to do the top row. Um, see how we go. All right, I think that's enough for tonight. Um, I've pretty much done the top row. Um, I've done all the top row. Um, one left is A15, which I need to tie to the OR gate. Um, otherwise, what have I got left? I've got let's see, A13, D3, D7, A10. Okay, I got a few. <laughs> I got about half, got about half, so maybe about 12 more to do. No idea if, it, well, at least the reset button works. No idea if the rest of it will work. Um, I would give it a quick test, uh, but I, I don't have, a, I need to make up a ribbon cable, I think. Uh, so I'll do that tomorrow. Then I can just test to see if I can actually see address, um, address activity on here. Um, yeah, I need to get the, uh, I need to get the pin out of the 27, uh, 74 LS32. Then I can wire that up. Let's see. To be continued.